Nikki Howard hails from Chicago, Illinois, as the daughter of gospel music royalty. Her mother is Josephine Howard of the Gospel Caravans, and her father, Clay Graham of the Pilgrim Jubilees. My mother and father are both musicians and gospel singers, and they were very good. Um, my mother definitely did train me because since I can remember, I always wanted to sing and, you know, I want to be a star. And so she was an amazing, amazing artist and taught me lots, you know, the diaphragm, all of the do's and the don'ts and, and everything like that. And then my father gave me the stick to it of it. Yes, you, know, you can do it, you're the best. No, like that sort of thing. Jubilees and caravans were frequent visitors to New Bethel Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan, where they would sing for Reverend C.O. Franklin and his daughter, Aretha. Off the heels of such songs such as Respect, Think, and Chain of Fools, Aretha would go on to be crowned the Queen of Soul and would soon make her return back to gospel music with the release of her album, Amazing Grace which is a complete full circle moment. And the choir singing for Aretha is Josephine Howard. And watching all of this happen from the audience is a young Mickey. I'll tell you something, the day that Aretha Franklin, or that whole week or whatever, came to Los Angeles to record uh, the Amazing Grace album, I went to every rehearsal I could possibly go to. I was one of the only kids allowed at rehearsal. I mean, I. James Cleveland, was, we called him Uncle James. He knew I had to be there. I just, you know, and it's, it's, it was so major to me. I never, ever, 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 ever forgot it. Oh, yeah. yes, we. Sort of like before Rita died, like three years before, um, um, we were talking on Facebook because she had gotten on Facebook. <laughs> it was hilarious. Somebody posted like, oh, when is the, the film going to come out or whatever? And I said, it was the best day of my life. I'll never forget it. And then she hit me back. Hilarious. It's like, come to the party. I, you, in, you in New York, come to my birthday party. Because you know, da, da, da. It was wonderful the last time I saw Miss Franklin. And it was about being at that, you know, that concert that was a major thing in my life. Surrounded by music legends from birth, it was no surprise that Mickey would soon go on to forge her own path in music when she joined the group side of it. That was school. I was in a wonderful university uh, under the tutelage of Augie Johnson, Greg Patton, no, Greg Matta and Louis Patton. They were like, uh, like little fathers to, to a certain extent, you know. Um, in, in terms of it developed me as an artist, one would teach me harmony, and one would teach me protocol, and, and one would, would teach me high notes and where to get them. And you know, and Augie was always, you know, this, 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 this. You can't do this. You do that. Discipline, discipline. With Mickey as the front woman, the group would tackle and blend many musical genres, such as rock. a disco classic, Georgie Porgy, into an R&B and funk masterpiece. I always liked Georgie Porgy. Okay. I don't. I think they always put my vocals too far down in the track. Mm -hmm. Like they had one, Take a Chance and Dance, mm -hmm. and I really liked that. And my vocals are so far back in the track, I sound like, <laughs> With her work and side effect, Mickey's talent could not be denied, and soon she began her career as a solo artist upon signing with Atlantic Records, where she'd released her debut single, Come Share My Love. which wasn't originally intended for her. Come Share My Love was written for Whitney Houston. You know, it was too soulful. 
And so they give it to me. And to me, I was like, I don't like this song. Because, you know, I, I carry from, you know, funk and, you know, Greece, you know. You're so white. That, that's what it sounded like to me. So I tried to throw stuff in it or whatever. And it would work. The single would skyrocket into the top five of the R&B charts, sending Mickey into super star. Baby, 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 baby. In the span of five years, she'd release eight top ten singles, including two number ones. But even with hit albums and hit singles, Mickey was no stranger to the discriminations and prejudices of the music industry. We were divided in those days in terms of uh, we had uh, we had the pop and the pop people get everything. And then you had uh, the urban. And you know, when you were confined to urban, you were confined to urban. They would never cross us over. You said, you're black. You know, you stay on the black side. I want to run to you. A song, I want to run to you, which is one of Whitney's hits, was written for me. Yeah, and the company said it's too pop because I, I was never supposed to be driven into pop. I was supposed to be you know, R&B, you know, whatever. Every white artist, pardon me, I don't mean it in a bad way. You know, you heard them from Taylor Dane all the way down. That came out in my era, Debbie, this and that, all of this. And they got to this day, they living better than me. They still get more money. And without the fight. Without the fight, I gotta fight. So it's not, it's not, it's like never, it's not changed. You've had many hits, some of which you wrote, you have uh, the writer's credits as well. But I'm more curious about, were you involved in the vocal arranging and production of those? Yes. I was involved in the vocal arrangement and production of most songs I sing that are recorded. Oh, definitely. <laughs> so why uh, why aren't on a lot of those records, why aren't, isn't your name? They don't call you that back in those days. Like now women are, I'm a producer. You write me down, I'm a writer and all this stuff. It was just like you did what you had to do to make that record right. But women don't get the credit for doing the things that we do. And that's why you don't hear that I wrote this, 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 and this. No, there's never been nothing nobody can do to keep my love from you. When I was a kid, you heard, you heard them talk about like this. And I'm still, and I'm that next generation, and I'm still talking about it. We don't get credit. And if you guys have gotten the credit, you would have gotten more money. Staying confined to what the industry considered black music also meant doing more work for less pay and smaller venues. The overwork, constant stress, and pressures would lead to Mickey losing her voice. I lost my voice. Yeah, and people talked about me bad too. Once I was in a room with two of my girlfriends, they were singers, right? And one hadn't seen me in a long time. We were, and so she was standing over there near the piano, you know? And she, and she said, I thought you said Mickey can't sing no more. She said, she couldn't, but she can now. I said, I hear y'all. So did you have to like change how you sang mm -hmm. after? Okay. I had a, you know, sing with your heart, not your throat. It, literally, there's no reason why I can sing and you can't. Um, our vocal cords are the same, everything is the same. It's just the way I think, or the way you think, it's different, we think different, and, and uh, how to emote and project that, you know. There's no physical reason. According to me, that left me with, you know, God, you know, God, if you give me back my voice or whatever, I'll do what I'm supposed to do. Not that I wasn't, but I worked so hard that it's, you can't keep your throat and work that hard. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times without, without the proper microphones and the band is too loud and I got to do two shows three nights and four nights in a row and mm -hmm. then stay up all night breastfeed or, or babysit or somebody got a fever and you know it was really difficult and um, the tiredness is what takes your voice away. Women do get away. But 
But she'd bounce back and continue to release critically acclaimed and Grammy nominated albums. While many regard her as one of the greatest voices in R&B, Mickey's heart has always been in jazz. Imagination is funny. It makes a cloudy day. On her debut album, she reworked the jazz standard Imagination and turned it into a top 15 R&B hit. Find it's only She'd portray jazz great Billie Holiday in Spike Lee's landmark film Malcolm X, and she'd even released a critically acclaimed tribute album in Holiday's honor. Today, Howard is continuing to shed light on many of jazz's unsung female artists. One of the things I've tried to do in my career is to keep the legacy of others alive, especially ones that did not have children. Like Billie Holiday didn't have children. There's no one to wave her flag. But of course, she's, you know, we're all her children now. Um, Abby Lincoln deserved the same thing. No one to wave her flag. She's amazing, you know. So I'm, I'm working on keeping Abby Lincoln's legacy alive at this time and uh, making her songs uh, known because they're certainly uh, they are really needed today. We need to hear these things. Our children, when they hear them, they go, I love this. I never heard that. Why would, because, you know, these were, our songs were our instruction. Our songs were how we stayed in contact. Life is a school, lest you're a fool. And the learning brings you pain. Our songs are what blended us. If you came in from Africa, in, in, in America, you are, and the natives are, that's how it is. So come do this with me. Do this. Now I'll come in from Africa. This is how we have to flow. Mm -hmm. In order to, to be, you know, what we're supposed to be in life. And, and that's what I do. And she's been doing it for over four decades with no signs of slowing down. Do you have any um, parting words for the viewers? Live your life, give your love each and every day. All right. Okay. All right, thank you.